promise to me You make it back in one piece el título de la exposición, Reflector de Miriadas, es una traducción del inglés Mirrored Reflector, que es el nombre que se le dio por primera vez bueno, cuando se patentó la bola de discoteca, que lo hizo en 1917 Louis Borster. Y de alguna manera las intenciones de este proyecto son precisamente estas, ¿no? o sea, entender la nocturnalidad como esa multiplicación de posibilidades, de potencia, de sensaciones y de experiencias. ¿no? Por eso la idea de la nocturnalidad aquí no está solamente como tema para nada, está sobre todo como experiencia y como vector que ha atravesado casi todas las capas de, del proyecto ¿no? en, el que hemos en las que hemos trabajado. O sea, cómo la, lo nocturno es esa multiplicación ¿no? de sensaciones, de mmm, experiencias, de percepciones y de posibilidades. El público se va a encontrar con una constelación de diferentes elementos que están todo el rato en relación entre sí, ¿no? que son elementos que van desde el olor a diferentes texturas ¿no? que encontramos en, los, en, el, en el dispositivo, diferentes también lugares como de sombras y de luces, muchas, diferentes atmósferas y también imágenes. So from the beginning we chose, together with Julia, my co-curator, four artists that for us could talk about nocturnality, nightlife, in all this kind of universal take on nightlife. So we took artists that were not specifically working on that theme. I think it was very important from the start that we took artists that we thought would bring this texture, this nocturnal aspect, but had nothing straightforward to do with nightlife. We started thinking about uh, Paul Estev, the architect, so also the idea of not having an artist, but an architect working with us closely on it. And it was actually a very fruitful collaboration, as you can see, because it was about thinking about a space totally and not only one part of a space. La pieza con la que contribuyo en esta exposición o espacio, como lo llamamos, es uh, Infinita Interioridad. En su primer aspecto, digamos, en lo espacial, uh, parte desde el propio edificio, uh, construye un espacio dentro de la sala que alude a formas de estar en la noche. Estos elementos uh, físicos que se incorporan en el espacio, de alguna forma, crean un vocabulario de situaciones en donde el cuerpo, por ejemplo, se sitúa en un espacio estrecho o un espacio ancho, o tiene la posibilidad de ver lejos o de ver cerca. Entonces, cada vez resituando dentro del espacio, vas construyendo esta serie de Uh, momentos de nocturnidad, digamos, que construyen esta experiencia uh, de lo que sería lo nocturno. Todos esos elementos arquitectónicos, además, están uh, cubiertos con distintas materialidades, materialidades que quizás están relacionadas con el cuerpo también. Uh, por ejemplo, uh, cremas de parafina, uh, pintalabios, lacas de uñas, uh, sombras de ojos, hay también una instalación lumínica que utiliza pues, las ondas de luz para crear una, una serie de, de ritmos también y de intensidades que se van desarrollando durante el tiempo de la exposición. Then uh, we started thinking about Matt Copson. I was thinking of Matt because we talked about nightlife together privately and I could sense it was also an obsession for him. He always worked with neon lights, so of course it has to do with artificial lights and all actually the research work that Paul worked about in his architecture and PhD in like research uh, capacity. So it was about talking to someone who's really specialized with light with Matt and who had a take with his generation because he's also a generation younger than us. What is nightlife about? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
La pieza sonora es de Alex Baczynski Jenkins. Alex es un coreógrafo y le hemos invitado precisamente a pensar el movimiento a través del sonido en, esta, en este proyecto, ¿no? es decir, entender cómo el sonido como una partitura también que se va desplegando a lo largo del tiempo, pero también en el espacio. La base es el paisaje sonoro de una de sus piezas, de una de sus performances, que se llama Untitled Holding Horizon, sin título, sosteniendo el horizonte. Because we need this ambience, because nightlife also is really about the heightening of the senses. So, what do we hear? How do we hear it? And I think it's very interesting in his score that he rethought for us that there are moments of high pitch, there are moments very low, there are moments where you can hear birds and things like this, there are moments where you're in a club. All of this is part of his score. And it really also, again, gives a completely de different texture because it's already so many textures at the same time on that score. Welcome to Paradiso! Anthea, I knew also that she had no specific relationship or no like stereotype, uh, like a stereotype of like a relationship to nightlife. But her take on it would be completely different. And from the start, I was really interested in her thinking about nightlife. I knew with her, I would go again in this abstract way of thinking about nightlife. My contribution to the exhibition Myriad Reflector is Night Flowers, Flores de Noches, and it's in three parts. Uh, the first part is a collaboration with the photographer Lewis Ronald, who I've worked with previously, and we uh, work with the performer, model, dancer, Jonathan Luke Baker, and it's a, a series of nine photographs, which are an homage to the photographer Ken Hark. So in some cases, Jonathan's body is expanded, in other cases, sometimes he's kind of uh, reduced. And these are placed into the floor, into the carpet of the exhibition. So the carpet, the room itself, becomes a frame as which to look at the work. Uh, the second part is a collaboration with the scent designer, Ezra Lloyd Jackson. And I shared with Ezra my thoughts on what the night were. So for me, the night I thought of in several ways. And so I shared all this information with Ezra, who then carried forward these and really maybe took an idea of classic scent structures that you might have in a 1980s perfume and re-kind of coded them or rebuilt them, taking these notes. So we have two scents um, and one of them uh, is really beautiful how he speaks about it, but he talks about this idea of um, a lavender which would normally be used to put you to sleep but he's kind of reconfigured it and it's one that would stimulate you or one that is metallic or one that would keep you awake. Um, so this is the second part and that's present in the exhibition the whole time. So when people come into the space it's almost like a, a, a scent scape as well as the landscape that's here. Um, and then the third part of the night flowers is performative. The show um, took a long time to come into being and I thought it would be nice to inaugurate the show almost with an incantation or a spell, one that really kind of held it in place and really kind of placed it into the night. The performance is also thinking about the idea of what a night flower is. So you have the idea of this flower which is being activated by the night. A flower which is not for human visual consumption, a flower which um, functions by its kind of intense smell rather than um, the visual. And that it uses that smell to attract. And often with night flowers, they're only living for one night. You know, they come into being opening and then they've done their job, a hyper efficient flower more than anything else. Feelings of love, yeah. Feelings of love.
Y de alguna manera eh, queremos que esta exposición sea una exposición para todas nosotras y nosotros. Es decir, para esas formas de reconectar con lo nocturno y con la nocturnalidad como un espacio también como de, de, de superar ¿no? también como esos, esos ritmos y esos espacios transparentes, legales, de, la, de, de lo diurno. And I feel and I hope that you can really sense all these frictions in the space of like moments of renouncement, of moments of giving up, of moments of like saying, yes, that's what I want, of desire, very complex desires in that space. Feelings of love, yeah. feelings of love, feelings of love.